Are you ready to be shocked? Well, my name is Dr. Anthony Yoon, and I'm known as America's Holistic Plastic Surgeon. And on this video, I'm gonna count down the top five what the f things in plastic surgery. Did you know that some women want their breasts so big that they're not happy with using the biggest size available? Currently, the biggest silicone breast implant made is 800 cc's, and you can see it's almost as big as my head. Well, an 800 cc implant can typically give a triple D cup in size to most women, sometimes even more. But when that's not enough, what is a woman to do? Well, in those situations, as a remedy, some plastic surgeons will put not one implant into a breast, but two. It's called stacking implants, two implants for each breast, four implants all together. Now, this is not something that is routinely done, and you gotta wonder how those implants slide around in each breast. But it has been rumored that certain celebrities have had this done. Celebrities like Pam Anderson and the late Anna Nicole Smith. So in addition to the implants moving around in there and not looking natural, breasts this large can put you at risk of complications like back, neck, and shoulder pain, droopiness of the breasts, stretch marks, and probably the most common thing, implant regret. Size does matter with breast implants and I always recommend picking the smallest size that you know you will be happy with. Yes, it's true. Some of the most disgusting things on earth can actually be used to clean your body. In some cases, maggots can be used medically to basically eat up dead tissue from non-healing wounds. Now, this isn't done all that commonly, but it is something that certain wound care doctors have in their back pocket in case they need it. More commonly, though, is the case of patients coming in with maggots already growing inside their wounds. Back when I was a surgical resident working in the burn unit, we had a patient come in with long-standing old chronic wounds. And when I looked at those wounds, I could see little things squiggling and moving around inside of there. And when I looked really closely, I figured out, oh my gosh, these are actually maggots. Now he lived in a broken down old trailer. He had had surgery on his leg that had not healed well. And because he wasn't in great shape, he couldn't take care of his wounds and flies ended up laying eggs in those wounds, which eventually became maggots. So we ended up putting him into our huge tub. We washed those wounds out copiously, and those maggots never came back. Now at the end of every burn unit rotation, the burn unit staff takes the resident that month and throws them into the tub. And guess who was thrown into this tub after this patient had his legs cleaned out? Yeah, this guy. Ugh. Yes, it's true. Plastic surgeons love to use cadaver skin to help reconstruct breasts. It's called alloderm, and this is skin literally taken from people after they've died who have donated the skin, and we often use the skin as a scaffolding for breast implants. During mastectomy surgery for breast cancer, all of the breast tissue is removed. That also removes a lot of the connective tissue and supporting structures of the breast. With all that supportive tissue being gone, there's nothing really to hold up a breast implant when it's used in reconstruction. And so plastic surgeons use the next best thing to your tissue. They use the tissue of somebody who has recently died. That cadaver skin can therefore help hold the implant in place, giving a more natural result and a longer lasting result. Now, cadaver skin can also be used in women who've had breast implants cosmetically, and they can be used to help reduce the risk of scar tissue, they can help reshape the breast and help support the breast implant. So there's always a tiny possibility that if you see somebody who has really nice looking breast implants, that person may also have cadaver skin inside her breasts as well. If you've undergone a nose job, it's very possible that you have had cocaine up your nose. Cocaine is a vasoconstrictor, meaning that it constricts blood vessels and it can reduce bleeding. And it is very commonly used in nose job surgery. The cocaine typically comes as a liquid that we put on little cotton pads and we stuff it into the patient's nose prior to the operation. This helps to constrict those blood vessels 
and limit bleeding when the operation is performed. But it's also possible that this cocaine can have some other effects. I used to work with a plastic surgeon who used to do a lot of nose jobs out in Hollywood. And one morning he came into the operating room and encountered a shocking sight. Two of his female employees were topless and high on cocaine that they swiped from the medicine cabinet. When he told them that he was gonna fire them, they replied that if he fired them, they would claim that he did the cocaine with them. So if you've had a nose job, it's definitely possible that you've had cocaine up your nose as well. One of the most feared complications of breast lift surgery is when there's not enough blood supply to the nipple and the areola. If this happens, the nipple can turn initially purple, then it can turn black, and it can literally fall off. So what do we do if this happens? Well, as plastic surgeons, when we see a nipple that has turned purple, we know that it has venous congestion. Essentially, it's getting blood supply from the artery, but the vein's not working so well, and so that deoxygenated, purplish colored blood is starting to fill up into that area. If that blood is not evacuated, eventually it backs up into the artery and the whole area turns black and it dies. This has happened to many a woman after breast lift surgery. And what's the best way to treat this? We go medieval with leeches. Leeches can act as an attachable vein. Basically, leeches can suck that purple, deoxygenated blood out of the area, allowing the blood to flow more normally. This can actually save the nipple and the areola as it allows new blood vessels to grow into there over the next several days. I've actually used leeches on very, very rare occasions when we're concerned about the blood supply after a breast lift. Well, these are some pretty WTF things in plastic surgery. What about some WTF things when we try to enlarge a man's down there? Take a peek at this video right up here where I go over some of the insane things that doctors are doing to enlarge a man's junk. And if you've been enjoying my videos, please subscribe to my channel and always remember, eat real food, use clean skincare, and only consider actual plastic surgery as a last resort.